Radio, and I had I had them say that we are this period 16, 16 days, days of activism against gender-based gender violence. violence and you know you keep hearing about these things and I think this is a situation of you know if something is far away from you which has never happened to you mm. it doesn't really concern you because I keep hearing about gender-based violence um, and you think about genital mutilation, you think mm. about, oh, the ladies in the domestic village who are, violence. yeah, domestic violence. And you're like, oh, I'm be sorry, but it doesn't touch close to what? To heart. Mm. And um, it just also just, it, like, shook me and I was like, okay, okay. So the people going through these things, it's now coming close to home. Um, on campus, during our school days, while we're at the university, starting to think about sexual harassment mm. against these young ladies. Is it something you think about? Are there any measures? Like what happens when okay, like someone's butt is touched? Um, do they report? Do they cry? Do they just go home and sleep and move on like, man, this is casual. This is how things happen in this our society. Have you experienced any form of sexual, maybe not sexual harassment, but sexual mm. violence? Because sexual harassment is a form of sexual violence in any way particularly while you were at the university? Um, apart from the, the going out, and maybe someone touches your butt. Yes, out, yes I did. <laughs> <laughs> apart from the going out and maybe someone touches your butt, um, um, I was very, um, uh, let me say, privileged because I grew up in groups. And so people knew that um, if someone gets drunk, you're on watch. If someone mm. gets like so, you it was always people looking out. For yeah, each other. if you see your friend is high and she's wasted, you you can't drink <laughs> yeah. because you're now on what babysitting. Wow. Yeah. Me so too. um, <laughs> I was blessed not to have an extreme mm. um case. And but then also um coming from the definition of sexual harassment, I realized that it seems I actually had very many encounters. But mm. you get um accustomed to the way of mm -hmm. the men and you think oh that's how you guys are those are mm. eh, those boda boda guys all those guys you find in bars they be like that yeah. they'll touch yeah. you they'll look at you in a funny way and you say don't look at me like that they're like you're in a bar you're in a short dress what do you expect mm. i have to look at you like this i have to wink wink and yeah so it's not like it made like huge impact in my mind that oh i was sexually harassed i just thought the men were being themselves. Yeah. And yeah, so that's for me my experience while so on I campus. I, like I hear you when you say that because even for me, like while at uni, it was, I wasn't really cautiously mm. aware of any, like you say, it's just guys. So you know how to protect yourself yeah. against these things yeah. because these guys, they're guys, they're going to do these things. Um, as in Africa Hall, which was most, for the most part like a very comfortable, mm. laid back, mm. safe place for me to be. But then I used to hear stories of other people in either particularly mm. hostels, yes. because um, hostels were not as um, strict to their rules mm. as halls. Um, people who interacted with boys from Lumumba, as yeah. Makere, like it was just chaotic and whatnot. Mm. But so you know, now like me, yeah, I'm like, ah, so boys from Lumumba mm. like this, you yeah. to go there. I never stepped in yeah. Lumumba for mm. all that time I Actually, was Actually, I, I did five years of campus <laughs> and I stepped there once in recess because uh, of all the empty. Yes, because <laughs> of all the stories yeah. I had had about what happens when you go to Lumumba. Lumumba. Or, okay. Yeah. yeah. And that's a culture that mm. has been like carried on for, Passed on. for like years. Like yeah. Like, yeah, it's now a tradition, mm. you know, that when you're in Lumumba, you're supposed to be a rowdy boy. Mm. <laughs> and problematic. Mm. And, and it works out yeah. and because everyone else is. Yeah, being like, the same and thing, we yeah. like people have given it permission, yeah, yeah. Like, to Those thrive. Are like, mm. uh, we know Lumumba, this is how it's supposed yeah. to be, mm. so it's fine. Mm. You carry on with your culture, yeah. Well, were you in Makere? No, I was not in Makere, I went to Uganda Christian University. Have you? I'm very Christian, <laughs> <laughs> so <Sato. laughs> you can't see the hair, yeah. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it there. Wow. <laughs> 
<laughs> have yeah. you had an experience yeah. with um, like any form of mm -hmm. sexual violence while in? Because I know like you see you is it's like super Christian. Yeah. They have all these rules mm -hmm. in order. This is how you should dress. No dreadlocks. Really? No jeans. No jeans. No jeans. I think. Yeah. No. No hot pants and leggings. Hands, yeah. Or, like they have like some. Yeah. Yeah. It's so like I want to know how it's like that. <laughs> okay. It's that not a COVID, <laughs> but yeah. Um, for me, I think for the for the most part of my university, which was like the first two years, mm -hmm. I think I got sexually harassed. I didn't actively think about it because for us, sexual harassment is like those small things are not sexual harassment. It has to go to the extreme. Until I think in second year, I had a friend who I went out with who sort of, he drugged me and then he raped me. And um, that, that, that was when I said, okay, this is really real because I went back to my room I, I sort of, I don't know, it's like someone has taken a part of mm. you away that you can never sort of get back. Mm. It, it, like, for me, that's when I, I said, this is serious. But even then, I didn't know what to do, who to go to. You think of your parents, you think of the police, you think of the doctor, you think of the counselor, you think of so many people to go to, but you don't know how to approach these people and if they'll give you help. Because before that, uh, in first year, I used to sleep with my friend. And we had this guy come in, um, sort of steal our laptop. Mm. So we went to the police station, and the policeman asked us, like, we we're friends. Mm -hmm. We knew this person. He came in. He took the laptop and all other things. And the guy asked us, like, so, so he's not re like the policeman was trying so hard to make it look like we had a relationship mm -hmm. with this guy, and it was yeah. sort of an argument, boyfriend, girlfriend, mm -hmm. and it's not serious, and it's not something we can do. So, drawing from that experience, I said, um, if I went to the mm -hmm. policeman mm -hmm. and told him this is my friend, mm -hmm. and he he has dragged me, mm -hmm. and we it would be like how much, and even up to now, people ask me those questions like, how maybe you ate his money, how much mm -hmm. money did you eat, or how what were you putting on, mm -hmm. or you sent him signs to mm. say like mm. I wanted to be raped mm. or it was like a, a, an experience where you just wanted it and then you regretted after mm. and, and an adult of course I'm stronger than that now but I think because mm. I still but I still break down yeah. I still cry about mm. it a few times mm. and then it was a very lonely place I made mm. very few friends mm. after that because I drew myself into a corner of like mm. I don't want to talk about it mm. and I don't want to sort of because out here the conversations people have around this like we're in a short skirt yeah. and I love to go out so I thought how do I tell people that it's sort of like it's your punishment for not being a, a good girl in quotes, uh, not being very mm. Christian, mm. and it's acceptable as long as people don't think you moral. Mm. Or like, so for me, it was a very bad experience, which of course I conceived after that. So I didn't know how to handle the whole. Where should I report? Mm. And I think a month down after that, I actually got the courage because I had gone to the hospital to say, let me go and report. Mm. And I had saved up some money, asked mm. my mom for more money. Like, mm. of course, she didn't know what was taking oh. place. Mm. Up to now, I never, like, tell them. Mm. It's like sort of a known truth that no one talks. We don't talk about it, but, but we know it. They know it happened, they, they, but they, they I don't, don't even know if they know mm. if it happened, but I assume they think they know that it happened. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like someone took a part away from you mm. and they, that part from you can never just be returned. So for young women at, at campus and university, many women go through this. Many girls even approach me mm -hmm. and they say, you know, this is what I'm going through, but so what do I do? Yeah. It's, so for me, that's when it became a serious conversation mm -hmm. from the... I even started to think of all the small things that this person used to say to yeah, me, yeah, and I could see how they led up to that yeah. point. Mm -hmm. But before, I was like, this is normal. These boys will be mm -hmm. boys, men mm -hmm. will be men, and mm -hmm. we're sort of friends, mm -hmm. and all boys do this. Because you think, okay, if I have a friend who's a boy, he's going to approach me in a certain way. Mm -hmm. yeah. At one point, he'll want yeah, sex. Yeah, yeah. So you think, well, it's normal. Mm -hmm. it's, it's him Just being a friend. A he'll boy. get over that mm -hmm. stage, and yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. become good friends. Mm -hmm. And I could see how all these small things, uh, the, the, the cut calling and all those things finally lead someone to do such a big thing. So for me, when the small things matter, as long as you feel like they're taking something away from you, it matters, it's sexual harassment. But at campus, it's very hard yeah. because like, we all have hormones, we all at that mm. stage, and then it's like, women are being emotional. 
and who to talk to, really. Because I never had a talk of, what do you do after? Mm -hmm. It's always like, what do you do before, before. to protect okay. yourself? What do you do? You don't put on short skirts, you don't pass dark alleys. Hang out you, with you don't hang out with friends, you don't get drunk around men, you just don't keep company of men. When you're the only girl, there have to be like four other girls. But after this happens, what do you do? No idea. This is, this is um, shocking. It's very That's unfortunate. Like, yeah, yeah. Sorry that you had to go through this. Yeah. Like it's so um, wow. I guess mm. that's it. Like um, I think because I've never experienced sexual violence to that, that extent. Extreme, yeah. So like I never like now that you're saying all these things. Like mm. okay, what do you do? Um, yeah. Like but then for me it brings like. This person was your mm -hmm. friend, mm -hmm. yeah. And we know that for the most part that women have mm -hmm. reported some kind of sexual violence or rape, it's someone that they know. Mm -hmm. Like what does that, like now we can't even be with people that we yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. Or we think we know. Or we think we know. Yeah. I mean, you can't trust a stranger, but no, you can't trust a person mm -hmm. that you know. Mm -hmm. oh. I think for me it's then what happens after. Because I've, I've, I think, for me, I was very unfortunate. I conceived. And I think when you're raped, no one ever asks you, what do you want to do? Yeah. There are, if the people are going to put the Bible before you and say, you know, you can't have an abortion you, because you have to have this kid, it's what's normal. Yeah. But again, they, they want to support you to go through that stage of healing. Mm, so yeah. you have to do all that by yourself and you're a young girl. And mm. then people will ask you to sort of forgive so you can't even go through the process of forgiving and because you're being coerced. yeah because you're being told this is mm. what you have to do mm. and people won't even believe you mm. so like you tell people i got raped say oh you think we don't know so you went out there had sex got pregnant and now you're telling us that you were raped mm. and then i think the one thing and the one thing that i really don't forget is mm. the fact that this person threw me out what in the morning after no, like more oh. like they rep you and then, and then in the morning they sort of throw your things out and tell you, you know, you go. So you there are wondering what happened, um, what, mm. like what really took place. So for you to come to that realization and then mm. people sort of ask you, oh, you have to talk to this person. So you have to actually plead with that person if you conceive because then you have to say, yeah. who will take care of my child? Yeah. Then you have to say, okay, let me plead with that. So for me, it was very emotional. Mm -hmm. Like now I have to plead with this person and get to them. I don't know. Like you have to deal with like the first Like I have to deal with the, the first, first incidents incident, with no so help. And then I have to come back and yeah. say, you know, can, can we, and, and I think the dehumanizing thing is people always ask you, can't you have a relationship with oh, him just God. for the sake of your child? <laughs> no, no. And you think, okay, this is for, I'm young, I'm at yeah. university. How you. I'm trying to deal with I all this. I feel like you are so brave. Um, I don't know. I, I think you are so, so, so brave. And I, uh, whatever you did to heal, I think mm -hmm. you did a lot. I yes. think I think there is the fact that you can openly share mm -hmm. it, relieve the moment, and mm -hmm. um, just like be able to help another person going through the same. Because. Mm -hmm. I know for a fact that very many women in yeah. Uganda mm -hmm. have experienced such grave instances of and sexual harassment, but they will it. never yeah. ever talk about it. Everyone also experienced it, and wow. I pretended that it didn't yeah. happen. And I can see later on, I start to see tiny things of why mm -hmm. I behave certain ways, because I'm like, eh. Hey, Oh, okay, a certain time in my life, and I pretend like that didn't happen. Yes. So for me to see someone who can talk about it, mm. like, eh, for them they are they okay. are brave. Eh? As in, for them they they did. I don't know what they mm -hmm. did, and and yet yours resulted in another human being. Yeah. So it's just so complex. First of all, thank you for sharing, mm -hmm. and and also because it highlights a lot about the society. Yes. Because number one, as we're talking about this, we have spoken about the men and how we are saying they will be men mm -hmm. that's how they are i expected it he's a guy um mm. why are we wearing why do we get drunk around a man yeah why should i wear dress up like this around a man so in all this we are really saying that number one men are 
in a trash. They are yeah. all rapists. <laughs> they are <laughs> so have to be careful. Uncontrollable uh, lack of um, self control. Uh, yeah, as in they don't have self control. They, no they can't restrain. For like them, as it's 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 us saying that the men in our society are rather animalistic. It's the lion sees yeah. flesh. The lion eats. There's no question about am I hungry or not. No, I will eat because I have seen flesh. Yeah. Um, it also says that as a society, people are not believing. We will still protect these animals mm-hmm. yeah. over a victim or mm. over even even if they are telling a lie the thing is always to first accommodate yeah. this person who has yeah. come out what mm-hmm. and and i think that's where there are so many issues with like will this thing actually ever get solved about sexual harassment even on campus and even in the on the broader scale because if we keep protecting Check the out. platform of yeah. animalistic mm-hmm. yeah. behavior and yeah. it's always the girl yeah. to dress right and then the question is what he's dressing, right? To not go out, yet we are young and we want to I mean, even experience out. life. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Who, who, like, cover themselves yeah. up yeah. in the Middle East have been, like, like, raped. When you conceived while you were at the university, mm. did the university, yeah, did like, the kick university you out? Get to know. Did, they, okay. did they get to know? Did Like, how did you go through that? Mm. Like, when you're dealing with this first thing of you have to heal, but now you are carrying a child. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is a whole other process. Like yeah. How do you mm. get through that in an environment like that mm. that doesn't even, may not even, like you've decided I'm not going to tell anyone about it because they won't believe me mm. in the first place. Yeah. Um, so what do you do? Or what did you do? Okay. I think for me, uh, when, I, when I discovered that I had conceived, actually in a very funny way, because mm. of course I think, I didn't know what the signs were. I just thought, okay, I have malaria and I'm feeling fine. And uh, also I was very scared that probably I had HIV mm, because yeah. then I hadn't gone for any medical service. I just mm. sat in my room and said, what will I tell the doctor? Yeah. Um, what will I, what, what will I tell people I was mm. when this happened? Because it, it was sort of not so clear in my mind what had really gone on, but I knew for sure that I had been raped. When I sort of realized, like, okay, it's like one month and a half into it, and I'm realizing, okay, now I've conceived, I just said, no, I can't stay at the university because I will have to tell my story, yeah. I will have to, like, converse with people, and it's not something I want to do. So I just said, no. I, I went to the head of department, I told her, I want to take a year out of school. So I just, like, got a day without actually, explaining. without having to explain mm. that. Because it's something you can't explain to your parents. You just can't explain to people because, you know, they'll ask you, where were you? And also I felt so guilty mm. about the whole thing. I just blamed myself because I, for so long, I thought it's, it's my fault. Yeah. So I tried so much to get the other person on my side, see, okay, I know it's my fault, but can we, like, have a kid, raise yeah. that kid together? And it took a lot of time for me to understand that it's actually not Not my fault because this person could have asked and this person was not in position to make the decision for me. And the fact that he had to even drag me means that he knew I I was not going to consent to it. And... It's, it's so hard, but you don't want to explain that to people at the beginning because you haven't healed, you're mm. still crying every night, you know. I, I still even cry sometimes now, but like then, every night I was just crying. So it was really hard to heal from it. At the same time, to explain to universities that, that you know when you are pregnant, no one ever asks you if you raped. Because yeah, it's it's it's, it's it's just like yes. okay you had very yes. and and no one wants to even know whether you raped and what you want to do with that so it's like you don't even go into the details you know. what if he doesn't believe me That's true. then what so no universities are very harsh with that and Christianity should be an embracing religion so for that I feel like I mean I'm not encouraging everyone to go out and have an intended pregnancy that brings me to the conversation of what abortion is and its importance yeah. and usually no one asks you what do you want to do it's like this is what you should do but we won't support you to do it just do it because it's the right thing to do according to them yeah yeah so you talked about um, about this friend of yours yeah like dragging you because they knew that you wouldn't uh, consent to it and for me like I'm thinking that all this stuff has happened like 
people are sexually harassed every day, people are raped all the time and like people are sitting on these stories and like all this pain and the heart, like they're sitting on it. And I'm thinking, do people actually know what consent is? Like even with someone that you know, even someone that you're mm-hmm. dating or yeah. whoever it is like. Because I feel like that's, that's the conversation that yeah. we need to start having mm-hmm. for things like that to, like for people to be able to recognize yeah. boundaries, mm-hmm. to be able mm-hmm. to seek consent and say, I mean, if, I if so you're true, saying, yeah. for example, that um, this, this person is my friend and at, yeah. at some point, mm-hmm. like, I don't know, he will come and hit on me like you mm-hmm. expected. So then mm-hmm. it should be easy for me to, to, to seek no. consent yeah. mm-hmm. because it's expected in some way. So yeah. you yeah. don't have to. I actually think... Like, I think it's such a necessary conversation. Because, one, I didn't really know what consent meant. And that's crazy because mm-hmm. yeah, I'm a grown up. And I think when you say that um, consent is something we need to talk about, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, to prevent or even to raise awareness of what sexual harassment is, I totally agree with you because the fact that you know that for everything concerning my body, there needs to be a question asked and I hold the power to say yes or no. Yeah. I think then solves the, the thing of sexual harassment. Mm. If someone is entering my space or even mm. just my emotional space by saying, mm. hey, I like it, baby, uncle, Ella, <laughs> things like that. Yeah. I'm like, no, I do not like that. Kindly stop. So I think when you say that consent would help at least start this yeah. conversation and even be a, a platform for it to be for sexual harassment. Yeah. To, to be known about and then to kind of like stop. Mm. I feel like it's such a good point. Yeah. Um, I think when we talk about consent, I think not people don't know about yeah. it. I think there is a, a, a culture of entitlement yes. yeah. that uh, because me and Patra, we are friends, I can touch, I can get Patras. Like it yeah. starts like that, mm-hmm. eh? yeah. even amongst us. As mm-hmm. in, we over know, there's a saying of, come on you. Yeah, come on you. <laughs> there's, there's, we don't have that like boundaries. boundaries. There's always this, yeah, consent without saying yes or no. But me, I think like consent for sex has always been held by the man in our tradition. So a woman just has to accept the man holds the, the power to say no or yes. So for a woman to say no shocks people. I walk in Kaja all the time and the, the mm-hmm. guys that paint nails sometimes say, Oh, you're Mujasi. Because when I walk, I tell them, Temungwata Kumagarachi. And for them, it's such a shock that a woman comes out and says, No, I don't want to be touched. Mm-hmm. You know, it's such a simple thing. Mm-hmm. If you tell cut people that are cut coding, like, Mumpitirach, Temuchidamu, like, simply in Uganda. No, that's very, I'm like, what? They, 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 they think, like, who, who in their right mind as a woman wouldn't want this? Yeah. So the, the, the intention is then now, let's insult her. Because if she yeah. thinks that she's above and beyond, you've seen the Shiba incident yeah, where she said, no man deserves me. <laughs> I think if a guy came up and said, no woman deserves me in Uganda, I'd be like, okay. It's good, like go to America. Yeah, like, like, good go for you. you, you know? mm. I, I have someone that I also like. So if you like something different, it's okay. Rabo go case, mm. which has taken on. It's okay for someone to keep on even sending you texts after you've gone to court. And that's the definition of I don't want it. That's the, because if mm. I take you to court, I take you to the I've police. Clearly, diff- yeah. I've yeah. clearly stated I that don't I don't. It. But who are you as a woman to say no? It mm. shocks people. Like why? Why would you say no to mm. someone? wanting to have sex with you, you should feel flattered. One of the things, I, I think that, like, as we can see that um, the way in which that a lot of men behave is, it comes from somewhere, I mm. think, yeah. that um, society has permitted it, mm. yeah, like this is, boys will mm. be boys and things like that, and mm-hmm. I think that, like you'll even talk to, just um, last week at my workplace, we had a conversation on consent, and we had um, young men talk about what they thought consent was. They were given a case study, and you guys, I was trying not to throw a shoe at someone because, <laughs> like, in my head, it's obvious. Like, you should know what to. Yeah. If if I want to pick your phone from, yeah, I will ask you, can I have your phone yeah. because it's yours? Like, in what? Like, how did we get to the point where people think it's okay to you know, do you. whatever it is you want more. with? Mm someone's body and I'm thinking for example in universities earlier I was talking about how Lumumba has a certain culture of Mm. like just being rowdy and violent and universities 
have they come to a point where like this is something serious that yeah. like even if it's not reported but mm -hmm. they know that it's happening they know that these yeah. things are happening even you were telling me about your mom who is a lecturer but she has also experienced yeah. some like so that kind of information makes me think that these yeah. people know that it's happening if it's happening to someone like who is a lecturer what is happening to Guy. Younger and girls, girls yeah. yeah, like it's definitely happening, and they are just like turning a blind eye to it. Mm. Are there conversations on consent? Are there policies that kind of just like rubbish all these yeah. old cultures or what? Like, I don't care if your parents didn't tell you about consent, but this is how it works here. Yeah. I feel like young women, first of all, don't have spaces for these things. Yeah. To even information, many organizations will concentrate on a dollar cents, and then the people that have children and above. Mm, yeah. So the university space is like just Empty. literally avoided because it's assumed that you're in that you confusing out. space of like you're adult or you're known, so you don't know what you really are. So universities actively should give out this information. It should be like something that comes with that package when you've yeah, just come into yeah. the university. Which, the, like um, I said, I didn't know where to go. Yeah. How, how do you not know where to go for something yeah, that's, that's life-changing? Like, how do, it's, it's still like, I still think back to it and I think, how do you just sit in your room and you don't know that you're supposed to go to a hospital first, yeah. go to the police station, find a counselor, and then you don't even know how to talk about it. How yeah. do we not have classes? Because at UC you have all these classes. I won't call them first classes, but you have all these classes in Old Testament, New Testament, ethics. How do we not have a class about sexual harassment, yeah. about HIV AIDS, about sexually transmitted diseases, about, okay, I just beg to be crazy, how to have sex in a safe environment, consent. Why are we not, because it's a problem, yeah. and mm. I think people are not, why are you not having classes on gender-based violence? Why is it that a graduate doesn't know what, what it means gender. to yeah. ask for consent, yeah. gender-based violence, how to put on a condom? Mm. Then if you talk about these things, oh, you love sex so much, mm. yeah. uh, but everyone is having sex, really, yeah. in, in their bedrooms, the we're just mm. burying our heads in the sand. Mm. Okay. Maybe I love sex but so what's much. Wrong with loving sex so much. Yeah, but yeah, let's human let's have a conversation. Let's have courses. Let's have information given out in classes by force. By the way, I, I, I think yeah. so too. I agree. Um, I was before I was asking a few people, asked, especially the people who who have done like um, undergrad, postgrad. I wanted to know the people who mm -hmm. went abroad. So I asked my sister, um, Kushas, and she told me when she went to Japan before the course began mm. they were brought together and like how you'd have maybe like an orientation talk and the boys were made they were talking about boundaries and the boys were meant to fear the girls to the extent that even in an elevator they would not want to share <laughs> an elevator with a girl mm. maybe that's extreme but well it's a start they would not want to share an elevator with a girl because uh, I, I might look at her wrongly i might i might mm. and, and i felt like Wow, do we have those in workplaces? Yeah. Do we have those in university? No, I didn't know if there was a senior woman because in yeah. secondary we had, I think, yeah, but some, especially yeah. would have a senior woman, would have, but they'll still not tell us about these things. Mm -hmm. It was just that I could go and talk to her about something. Um, also, as I was just trying to remember, how did I like maybe navigate this mm. all through, like from S1 to university? I remember mm. there was something called straight talk. I don't know if you guys remember. Yeah. <laughs> straight talk yeah. had all manner of <laughs> problems yeah, we had and weird questions. questions. Yeah. But they would, but <laughs> they were necessary. Like yeah, they were valid yeah. questions. And People I would read straight what? talk religiously. <laughs> and, and and those things, what? They kind of like they they carry you to yeah because you reach a, a point just like you were saying on campus and no one's talking about anything mm. yet now here you're no longer like in a single school you're now boys and girls and not at home and a bit so, adult yeah and yeah. so it's like the permission to have you sex know is what I think a few months ago I was asking a, a colleague that why is it as working in the media and I was asking why why is it that even the people in the media yeah. themselves like. Like why? Why do we have? Like we should be the 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 people that are kind mm. of leading conversations mm. yeah. on these things and whatnot. But even the people who end up, mm. they are not any different. And this person told me like we are just part of the DNA 
of the society in which we live. Yeah. So we can't expect any different. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking even in universities, who are the people that make these bodies? Yeah. They're mm -hmm. part of the DNA mm -hmm. of the society mm -hmm. in which we live in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if they don't have that awareness mm -hmm. that this is something serious that we yeah. need to um, we need to change or start to talk about or like deal with because mm. it's a serious problem. Yeah. If they don't have that awareness, how do we get to have these mm. toxic, you know, conversations on consent and sexual harassment if even the people who make these policies? So for me, I really want to know. First of all, are there any policies? Because they might yeah. be there and we are just like yeah. people are just <laughs> ignoring them. How um, can they be communicated? Mm. Um, to the communities, to mm. the university communities or college communities, um, whether it's in even halls themselves, yeah. what, mm. are the, what are the rules and regulations mm -hmm. of certain halls and hostels and things like that. Even bars, mm. like yeah. because you know these bars, certain bars will open because they know university kids will come and hang out here, yeah. but what are the rules and regulations mm. of this bar? Yeah, like certain things okay. like that. Like I don't know if bars. <laughs> No, I always think that they should. Yeah, yeah, they should. Yeah, they really should. Think that's why government exists, yeah. to regulate Yeah, they areas. really should. I mean, yeah. if you're telling me that I cannot drink because I am below 18, then sure. Should. Yeah, I should not yeah. be raped. If, should, if, if someone, be raped. someone is fighting, fighting, in that's uh, fighting itself yeah. is a form of violence, mm. yeah? If, if you mean they throw guys out who are fighting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but So if I'm seeing someone out. dragging someone's drink, that's already a, yeah. a form of violence where mm -hmm. something's going to happen. What, what measures? Yeah, what measures? I are think universities have tried though. Uh, Macquarie University, for one, I'm not so hopeful about UCU because even when they will bring it in, it will sort of be like our national framework for sexuality education that we have, the comprehensive one that just talks about. Uh, religion and no one should touch this and no one. So I feel like if UCU did one, it would have the same. But I'm hopeful they can at least sensitize. We have one at Makere, which was reviewed by Livia Tamade. Um, it's very good. I've read through it. Yeah. it. It. We have the SOB, which is coming in. What's that? The Sexual Offenses Bill, yeah. uh, which will talk about what sexual harassment actually is. It actually even defines touching a bum, touching which mm. parts. And it describes this as any intention you have that is sexual in nature, yeah. then you can actually be taken to prison for that stuff. Mm -hmm. And we, of course we're having many discussions around that. I'm very hopeful about it, though I don't know if it will be passed. Even the domestic violence bill, anything to protect women, usually yeah. takes a very long time because the guys perpetrating it are the same guys yeah. in parliament yeah. and they are the majority and they are still discussing the same thing. So they are sexual harassers. I believe because if you're not, you really want to actively mm -hmm. make sure that it passes. So I think the government has has the, the team with the sexual offences bill has tried, but it's not. It's it's. Let's pray it gets passed. The, yeah. the policies are there. The implementation, uh, making sure they are they are reviewed. Mm -hmm. No one thinks it's an important thing to do. So I guess there's like, something interesting though. This is on the side. I was talking to a. Um, second year on campus. And she told me the same thing, yeah. that all right now, uh, the previous um, regulations were hopeless, we didn't know where to go, we yeah. can't go to Senate. How do you move all the way from Africa Hall to Senate building, mm. say at 3 a.m.? Mm. As in, do you have representatives in your hall? Do you go to the chair yeah. lady? Yeah. You remember in Africa, they would yeah. lock us mm -hmm. in our different blocks. Yeah. So if you're in block A, yeah. can you go to block D? No, you can't. So, but then, the thing she highlighted is that yeah, right now they they are adjusting, they are amending, or yeah. adjusting, or yeah, the regulations. But that will come out in June. So what are we going to do until June yeah. next year? So I think mm. like okay, that's um, sad. I want to hear from someone. She's a lawyer who can kind of wrap this up like for us and yeah. paint for us a, a okay. picture of what it looks now and what it's supposed mm. to look and answer your question what yeah. do we do between now and, and then and, and june and until then, the or the until like we may think it's june Kumbe it's yeah next it year. might be next mm. year like but also you know that thing of we are so good at policy making but when it comes Imp to implementation, implementation yeah so
so we've been talking about trip and how um, people like me or personally I didn't know where to go I didn't know what to do so I sort of want to talk about what where you should go and what you should do first if you get trapped first of all I think you should not shower don't do anything I know it's emotional you want to shower and get all that bad from you go to a police station if you have one near you they'll give you a form they'll assign you a medical personnel and they'll get the evidence but also they'll give you PEP which is very important for you not to contract HIV AIDS and emergency treatments for other things. Make sure you don't get pregnant from that ordeal. Make sure you check for other STDs, which the medical personnel will do. And um, if you don't, because sometimes people don't have access to police stations, they are far, you're probably in a rural area or you, know, you are in a weird space, generally. Uh, go to a medical personnel then if you have access to that because you need that evidence but also you need PEP, you need all this other emergency treatment that you can get. Another thing that we overlook is the fact that your emotions are all over the place and you could even kill yourself, you're blaming yourself so much thing has happened to you so you need to find a counsellor. At least if I knew what I knew now, I would have found a counsellor, someone who's outside that situation, someone who you think won't judge you to go through those emotions with. And it's important to find that person if you can within the first week. Universities have these provisions. Uh, I know Uganda Christian University has a really good counseling section. I think all universities have. So if you're a young woman, you're out there, I think you should go through these three steps. Debbie, welcome to Black Man Sugar. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> it's good to see you. Um, We've been talking about sexual violence, sexual harassment, particularly in the context of um, universities. Tendo shared a very heartbreaking story that I'm a, I believe that a lot of women have experienced. As women, we live in a world where you have this awareness that it could happen. Yeah, like you don't know when it's like when death. It you don't know when it, know will, it happen, will happen, but you know that it will or it may happen. And I just want to ask, what is sexual harassment or what is what falls under sexual violence? What is sexual violence? Um, sexual violence is a very wide, um, like the explanation of sexual violence is very lengthy. But in brief, sexual harassment is any coerced or bullied act, um, sexual act. The act has to be sexual in nature. Uh, that is obtained without the person's consent. Um, it could uh, it could be rape, could be defilement, it could be touching someone's bum thigh, it could be stimulating, you know, someone's organ. And um, the beauty, if I may just say something in defining it about the new sexual offences bill, is that it expounds on what amounts to sexual harassment to put in things, use of objects, mm. things like dildos, you know, a stick, um, oral sex, um, anal sex, yeah. So anything that has to do with either stimulating your mouth, your breast, your thighs, your anus, your body, your body yeah. touching you in a sexual way without your consent, or if that consent is got by force, by threat, or if uh, that consent is given from a person who has a weaker authority over the other. For example, a lecturer, a student, a parent, a child, a guardian, Sorry. a child. No, no, no. Then that consent, consent is given by someone of a weaker authority over mm -hmm. the other, over the one who is receiving the sexual act. For example, a lecturer, student, lecturer is in a, in a position of trust power. and power. Mm -hmm. A uh, parent is in a position of trust, mm. okay? Um, a guardian is in a position of trust. So if a guardian has sex with a, a child whom he takes care of, uh, even if they assume that the kid has consented, it's no consent. In any case, a child cannot consent, mm. okay? So people, people who have impairments, like mental impairments, mm. cannot consent. Yeah, so sexual um, harassment entails all the things put together, as long as the key element is that, as long as there isn't a consent from the person that you're seeking to have this sexual act with, mm. then that amounts to a sexual harassment and it will lead to a sexual offense. Right. Uh, yeah. Still on that question, um, is indecent exposure 
does it also fall under sexual harassment? And what about um, the cut calling, the, the innuendo, mm -hmm. things that do not really touch your body, there's no mm -hmm. physical contact. Mm -hmm. However, there's maybe been speech, there's been showing of um, pictures that um, Dick pics. offend, yeah, offend you, mm -hmm. or saying words that offend you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, does that also fall under sexual harassment? Yes. Now, indecent exposure is is an offense towards the person who is exposing themselves indecently. But if if I go to write, if a person who is not exposing, for example, you're wearing your mini skirt. And then um, Eugene here comes and you know touches you because of that short skirt that amounts to sexual harassment. No. But no. I, I don't know if I go to right no, I decent mean, exposure. If like for example I pulled my dress up and I walked through through the street, no. uh, there's several people that I will meet on the way. Will they Be are they right harassed? to come and say that I you have harassed sexually them. harassed them? not according to the definition of sexual harassment. Understand? But there is an offense mm -hmm. as committed to that committed. Home. There is an offense that I can't commit by indecently walking mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that. But it cannot be said sexual harassment. Right. The definition of sexual, sexual harassment does not entail mm -hmm. you the way you dress up. You understand? Mm -hmm. eh? But touching you, calling you names, Sending you penises, uh, um, dildos, anything that insinuates or connotes sexual mm -hmm. pleasure and sexual activity. Mm -hmm. It can be, now maybe that's where I should have said, it can be mental mm -hmm. or physical. Mm -hmm. So right. if mentally, mm -hmm. in your head, as a reasonable person, when they send an object, it shows it looks like a penis, mm -hmm. you know? It connotes to you that this is a sexual activity that this person is referring into. Then it becomes uh, sexual harassment. Debbie, you talked about uh, one of the key things that you kept on talking about in your definition of sexual harassment mm -hmm. is the presence or absence of consent. consent. Yeah. So one of the things you talked about in the first segment is that there's a there's an obscure understanding of what consent is mm -hmm. yeah especially because we have grown up in a society where you don't you don't you're, you're not very direct mm -hmm. or, or like mm -hmm. verbal like saying yes or no uh, for and not just for not just in the sexual context but even in other like other things um also not so verbal with the question yeah. whether it's Vocal. asking or whether it is in accept, mm. in response yeah mm -hmm. so what is and what is not consent consent in all aspects whether sexual mm. or normal ordinary contract law it's being able to say yes expressly saying yes without being forced say i patra if we are to write it mm. i patra an adult of sound mind mm. do accept on this date mm. to enter into you know to have sex with Eugene, okay <laughs> without having not been influenced or forced to do so mm. you understand so that is that is put right that i explicitly agree to have sex and i've not been forced to agree. So, but Debbie. so you, you there, are, there are three things that must be there. Mm -hmm. You must freely say that yes, we are going to have mm -hmm. sex. Two, it is revocable. If mm -hmm. I agreed as we are entering the the, 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 the house, in the sitting room, and we reach the bedroom and I say no, it has been withdrawn. Mm -hmm. Anything after that is abused. Okay? The other thing about it is that, um, have I said that it should be given freely? Yes. You should give it freely, out, yes. of, out of your will, without being forced. Yeah, so those are so the things about consent. Maybe just to ask, does this consent have to be verbal? Because um, it is possible, I mean, as a human being, I, mm. I assume, okay, I expect, mm. because that someone mm. will show discomfort. Mm. Yeah, they may not necessarily be verbal and say no, mm -hmm. but they may show a certain level of discomfort, discomfort. that will make me back off. Mm -hmm. um, does so? My question is: Does it have to be verbal for it to be consent? Yes. 
it has to be verbal and I get where you're coming from and I can only imagine what you're thinking next. You're from, you know, making out, smoothing, kissing, doing all these things. You go on the bed, the other one seems to be enjoyed. She even probably gets an orgasm, then she comes and says, you know what? I'm done. No. You raped me. No. You raped me. Yeah, <laughs> but it's the reality and it's the truth. It is happening. You know, recently I... I happened to be in the village and I got a, a case where the woman was raped and uh, the man wants to separate with her. But it was even her first time to enjoy the sex, to get an orgasm. And the reason he's separating with that is because the explanation she gave shows that she was enjoying she it. it. She enjoyed it. Now for him he's saying it's not rape. If you enjoyed it, it's not rape. She wasn't hurt, she wasn't bruised, so she enjoyed it. You get. But she did not give her consent. It doesn't yes. matter. Her, it, her vagina was just stimulated. It's a biological process. Yes. But it's not that because she was enjoying the act itself, because she did not consent to it. So it's very important that the yes is gotten, Bravo. very expressively gotten. If the person doesn't talk, maybe they use sign language or whatever it is, but there's a way they communicate. Yes. Yes. So someone should be able to say yes to eat and if they say no let it be taken and it doesn't mean that because you've had sex before once or twice mm -hmm. then it's automatic the next time also it, be. it is guaranteed you're going to have the sex no you should seek that consent all the time and every time right. even if so you're married <laughs> before we get there but mm. you say you said something very important you should seek mm. and as um as earlier on as Pato was talking um she said something that we are a society that we really scatter around issues eh? we, we, we speak we speak we speak very indirectly mm. it's always mm. uh, when ask, <laughs> no no there's, there's when they're asking for a bribe they say message and I kept wondering what the borderman I was like, what is this man saying that the woman is that the husband is not chasing out the right like, yeah, this border men they have their own uh, um, terminologies, mm. but then um, seeing that we are a, a, a society that does not um, express ourselves, mm. be direct mm. in, in our expression, mm. um, it's important that what you said that in order to get consent, also there has to be a question that is explicitly mm. asked. But I really wonder how possible mm. is that that uh, Patra on a night out is going to be a guy who's fairly. Yes, he's intoxicated mm. and he's going to say, Hey, Patra, can we go home and I sleep Make with you? Make some love. Mm. Ah, that's even not... <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so you see, you're already yeah. uncomfortable with being that's direct. Right. Being yeah. direct. Of course, like Patra said earlier on, it's the culture, the setting of our culture. You know the things, you grow up in a family and you're not supposed to talk about sex. Mm -hmm. It's an abomination to, to discuss sex. Girls grow up not knowing what their what their bodies are, what 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 sex is, and they just learn on the job or they learn from outside there. And unfortunately, most of them learn from this bad ordeal of mm, being yeah. sexually abused. Mm. But it is what it is. We have to accept that if someone asks you, Patra, can you please go home and make some love and have sex? You can say yes or no. Mm -hmm. And and the, the, on the issue of the messy guy, you know, it could be that that is their term that they are understood. And if I'm to be the bad, the, the devil's advocate and I'm defending the other guy, then it would be up to me to prove that a messy was their language of saying yes. yes to mm. sex, mm. yes, so it, it would be up to me to approve that. You know, the guy, once she said a message, the guy knew it was time for sex, but okay. it's important that we all learn both both sides, the mm. guys and the, the, the ladies, that you ask, can be plain, can we have sex? It is sex, it is mm. what it is, so mm. you don't have to fear, can we, you're not going to drink, you're not going to, to sit, you're going to have sex, mm. so can we have, go and have sex? And I think, I think and as much say, as I'm yes, conservative, no. I, I I I agree with that because for the greater good, mm. um, it might be as it might be super uncomfortable, mm. but at the end of the day, it is for the greater good yes, and yes. it will help. It mm. is very mm. beneficial. When, when you said uh, when you gave that connotation of okube messi and whatnot, I think one of the things that is important is that if you I mean like in any form of communication, if you don't understand what it means, mm. seek clarity. Mm. Yes. Like mm. what yes. do you yes. mean? Yes. Mm. That's yeah? right. By what this. do you mean? What do so you mean for you to this? be able to give um, 
the consent that it and maybe just to add earlier you t- you talked about um sex sexual violence being able to happen in even in marriage mm-hmm. yeah and i'm thinking what does consent look like in sexual or romantic relationships or marriage or like actual like actual actual relationships what does it look like um if for example um christians will say i'm married my body is my husband uh, my husband's body is mine yeah so how does that like how does that work how if if, if it's yes how does how do we reconcile that how many stories have you heard of someone going to the police a wife or a husband and saying that my husband raped me mm-hmm. like no one like like your husband raped you how does that work yeah and unfortunately very many very many incidents that have happened that have even cost life i know of a case where uh, the woman had just given birth and this guy you know raped her and she died so she left behind about two weeks old baby uh, but these things happen you know and uh, much as your body is for your husband as a Christian that you are and your husband's body is yours first your body is yours and you cannot give what you don't have so if your body is yours and at this particular night this very seventh day of you know December I am feeling like my body is not capable of performing a sexual act therefore I'm telling you no sex as you whom I am about to give whom I always give my body please respect that I am not going to have sex because I have said no so it's very important even if your body is for your husband you put yourself first you cannot take care of him you don't take care of yourself if you if you're sick you're sick you can't have sex if you're just not in the mood you're not in the mood it's not your work to to, to, to sit there as the other one comes on you with horrible facial expressions for you, they are crying in tears, the other one is stretching, mm. holding the face there, yeah, it's not, it's not right, yeah. Mm. So you be, should be able to say no. Okay, so with the awareness, like now, like um, in the past few years, so like we are talking a lot about sexual harassment, there's mm. the hashtag me too and whatnot, mm. one of the questions I've had a lot, particularly from guys, mm-hmm. yeah, is that now, um, how do we, how do we vibe like girls now? How do we, uh, how do we court people? Mm-hmm. Earlier she shared a story uh, from Japan, like mm-hmm. guys are now not entering lifts because With I don't want female. to be, yeah, like things case. like that. What's the appropriate way? Is there, is there one way? Are there other ways in which people can court their interests, mm. love interests. I think, I think the most appropriate way is to know respect. Respect for yourself and respect for others. Treat the woman that you're going, treat the girl that you're going, or the boy that you're going to court as a fellow human being. How would you as a guy otherwise go and ask another guy for like, um, to go watch a match? Would you go by grabbing their butts? Mm. Would you go and hold his crunch? No. That is the same way you should approach the girl. Mm. Go to her, be human, be respectful. And then on the side of the girl, set boundaries. Set boundaries for yourself. Know when to call out someone and say, no, that is wrong, I do not like it. No, I like you, but we cannot go beyond this until maybe this and this happens, you know? So it's about being respectful and not looking at um, the other sex as a sex object. Yeah. When you see a girl, you've seen sex, you've seen her thighs, you start, you know, mm-hmm. getting, your heart runs faster, you, your blood is pumping, you want, at least until when you touch, you know. And yet, on the other side, if a girl sees a guy walking, we don't see those things. Mm-hmm. It's because, not because girls don't get attracted to men. Yes. Mm-hmm. We see them and people go, oh, you know, mm-hmm. he looks nice, but respect, we treat them with respect and we let it do you know why I asked that question? Mm-hmm. Um, maybe with the background mm-hmm. of uh, the most recent story of Brian Isiko, mm-hmm. sexual harassing a uh, member of parliament. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you read um, the response that came out from that from that case, from the social commentary that came from that, mm-hmm. like people will say, 
have been telling the MP, you're not the first person to be to, to be, be chased or to chased, be vibed or whatnot mm-hmm. and things like that because there's that um, thinking that as a girl or as a woman, I, mu- I, I must be chased or like uh, I must be pursued, yeah? And so like people will relentlessly like persuade you, yeah? Um, like men persuade and women are persuaded. So how do we, how even do we, we say no? Yeah, so even if I say no, like oh after after like three, four, five messages, maybe ten, maybe mm-hmm. maybe twenty or two hundred messages, she will say yes. Mm-hmm. So at what point does it become harassment? That I will send someone that I like a message like, Oh, can we do dinner? Maybe or like nice dress mm-hmm. or whatever Good it morning. is. Yeah, because those are the messages mm-hmm. Isiko was sending this. Like she, she was literally stalking her, like mm. see her and say, oh, nice dress today, things like that, mm. yeah. So at what point does that become, and now this is someone she didn't even know, but mm. from someone that I know, maybe someone I work with or a mm. friend, yeah. Mm. At what point does it become harassment? Mm. Yeah, and, and I just add on to what Patra is asking. It's such a blurry line, mm. because as still from our society of not being very, like we're taught to always say, ah, no, no, mm. no, you leave me. Mm. Uh, uh, don't yeah. dare, like, you, uh, no, 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 don't disturb me. And you keep saying that. And it has happened over so many, very many ladies mm. that they've said, no, 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 yes. No, yeah. no, 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 yes. no, 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 yes. Mm. So I now, it bright if, and Grumpo says, she first said no like three times. And I pursued then her, I, I, pursued I her, even went to the said. restaurant, I knew that she was going to the saloon, so I also went to the saloon, yeah. which is kind of like stroking, because how did you get to know wow, all that stuff? So, how do we yet break the first that? time when she said no, that was consent. Mm-hmm. So, now, <laughs> how do we yeah. how break do that? We, how do we yeah. draw that line? Yeah. Yes, it's a very thin line to, to, to walk through. But, um, like you said, society has taught us patriarchy. One of, the, one of patriarchy's tendency of s- subduing women mm. is to make us feel very inferior about ourselves. Mm. We've been made to think we are very weak sex, and because we are weaker sex, we must be submissive. You must be submissive. So you will find someone saying no, but one doesn't want to say it in a tough way. Mm. They go no. Oh, they want to yeah, say yes. Me, no. Oh, they want to say yes, but they are holding back. You understand? Mm. Because they have been told as a woman, you don't say yes on on first That's account. Yeah. You mm. get eh? But at the end of the day, this is your body, mm. and you know what you want. Mm. So it's very important to come out from the very start. Make it very clear, even if it's your friends, like you say, mm. in, in, in the case of um, Honorable Slivia Rambogo and Isiko, mm. she did not know him. Mm. But you're saying even if it is your friend, your friends must certainly know when you're meaning business and when you're joking, mm. okay? So if your friend has sent you him dressed in his suit, he's only saying, my dear, I am loaded, come let's go, okay? And you know, you go out. There is a point when you will see and he is doing what you don't want. You stand up and say, look here, you're doing what you're doing, I don't want it. Either stop it or I walk away. You know? Uh-huh. What you did is not funny. Stop it or I'll walk away. And he will know your meaning business. And when he says, I like you and you don't like him telling you, Jane, I don't want I don't want anything to happen to our friendship, but if you think that it has to go that way, then it stops here. Yeah. It stops here and it has ended get out you know be very blunt and mm. be very open but also in respect to those people that you don't know now if i may speak to honorable rambogo's case it's because someone she did not know yeah. but it's not a one-time incident yeah he kept doing it she blocked him he did it again yeah. he went open another account and sent it to her he wasn't only sending those messages he was sending pornographic things yeah. sending himself sending his dicks so, mm. you know all those things those mm. amount to harassment mm. the first moment she said no he would have respected that second no he has been doing it for a long time so you you can see it coming it's mm. not that it just happens today and it ends there. Yeah. It, it, though there are those cases of sexual harassment where you're walking on the street, someone grabs you and rapes you, yeah. okay? But there are incidences that you can see coming yeah. and you can avoid them. It's mm. a matter of standing on your two feet and saying, you know what? Mm. No. 
mm. get the hell out of my room don't come back you are mm. camper get out of my room don't come back okay and in such a situation i wanted mm. to ask um okay, two questions in picking up from what you just said in such a situation i've told them the guy because mm. on campus would be visited mm. now in africa home mm. gets a course at midnight mm. in hostel mm. You have Open sleepovers, yes. <laughs> yeah, you you'd have a sleepover, yes. things like that. Mm. Now, say I have told this guy I'm in a hostel, maybe mm. I don't have the regulations of uh, being in a campus hall. Mm. I told this guy, please leave my room, he would like to sleep now. Mm. He does not. Mm. What do I do? And um, where do I go to? What does the law provide for me? Mm. Also, um, say I have been sexually harassed, not yet, no, no sexual violence yet. Mm. What do I do? Does the law still provide for me? Yeah, sexually harassed? Yes, say for example, I, like someone has, like say I had the, the situation of the Honorable mm. Sylvia, mm. but I'm on campus. Mm. What do I do? Where do I go to legally? Mm. And um, do I have to have evidence? Okay, I just want to know. Does the what university, to do? for example, provide, um, because like for the time I was in, I, I guess even you even like for the time I was in university, I didn't she I didn't know. Like again I like I wasn't consciously aware mm. of it that mm. if anything happened this is where I should go. Mm. In that Did you even in, know in where the, the police was found. Okay, mm. in the way in the way that we had been told that if they steal your laptop or they yeah, steal your yeah. phone you, the police station is here. Yeah. Mm. But in in the event of um like a sexual violence act or rape or whatever what does the, the universities do you know if universities have like any any policies in place or this is where I should go this is what you can do or even in, if if they say it's student leaders mm. yeah who are those student leaders that I should go to mm. in the in the event that something like that happened mm. yeah um, let me first address the incident of the hostel now you in your room this moron is in your room he doesn't want to get out mm. before you even think of that law no, or oh, police most hostels have scurries mm. go for your scar go call your hostel manager do you know how that plays that, out yeah. let me give you a that scenario that is your boyfriend <laughs> no no, 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 no let me give you another scenario that's what they'll tell uh, you Hendo earlier on told us that they were robbed by a friend of theirs yeah so i'm in my room mm. This guy has refused to leave my room. Mm. Am I going to leave my room with my laptop, with my TV, with my <laughs> valuables, with this guy who has refused to leave my room? Everybody to walk thinks. down four levels. I was in a hostel. Mm. It was huge. Walk down four levels. Walk down four levels. Mm. Walk. Okay. It was a huge hostel. It was a really huge, as on mm. in Olympia Hostel mm. in Makere. Mm. It was really huge. Mm. And I'm now just picturing moving from there to until down. the Ascari. Until the Ascari. Very, very far. But also, okay. usually, because Ascaris will tell you, but this is someone you know. What mm. problem is it? What yes, problem are you having? Because you're friends. Because mm -hmm. we want to. We Don't want disturb to, us. Want to to because by the time you think of police and what it's mm. too late. Like you're saying, you've left him in your room mm. with your thing. Mm. So there are very many things. You just have to be smart. One, mm. you have neighbors mm -hmm. around there. Ask him to come out, pull out your key. Tell him I'm going to lock you in if you don't come out. Actually, mm. be dramatic. Okay? Mm. Be dramatic. <laughs> Tell him I'm going to lock you in if you don't come out. If he doesn't want to come out, and you don't want to, probably has grabbed the key. Call their neighbor, say, guys, stand here. I'm make coming. An alarm. We make an alarm or go down to a scary. Do something. Be, be vigilant. Just be vigilant. Make an alarm because I doubt there is an scary or police officer who will say, when you make an alarm. Sometimes this, this, these statements are made in, for example, if you go to an Ascari, when Ascari knows this person has frequented here, mm -hmm. he has slept mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. he's, we know him, mm -hmm. maybe they have just had what? Okay. Relationship yeah. what? Problem. Mm -hmm. But if, if they realize you're screaming mm -hmm. and you're actually serious about it, there's nobody who is going to do what? You'll be shocked. People are actually always out there open to listen to what? To people who are sexually mm -hmm. harassed and to help them. In respect to university policies, mm. the only policy that I know is Makere's, mm. okay? Which, as rightly stated, shall come in, in June, in operation in mm. June, okay? But uh, even then, having a policy is one thing, 
but it being effective and of help is another. Mm -hmm. For example, I, I, I always, if I had a chance to like meet the vice chancellor or meet the people, the select committee that makes those policies at university, it would be nice to ask them who the committee in charge of hearing these cases, who are they? Mm -hmm. in, 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 the, in their wake of Ngoroge, Ngoroge, mm, yes, right on case, um, I was on radio and I was listening to a lecturer from uh, Chambo. And, and she, she's a pretty much fairly an old lady. Okay? But the excuse that she was giving, how was she dressed? Oh These girls God. go partying. They go partying the whole semester and yet at the end of the semester they want results. So they end up doing such things. So it's important to have a committee that actually does understand that is not biased. You, you, our, our society is full of patriarchal, mm. patriarchal settings, right from police even to the judge. You go to police and say you've been sexually harassed and you find it's a policeman who believes a woman is inferior, she's second class, her work mm. is supposed to be providing sex, he will say no. You're lying. Yeah. It's your boyfriend. You understand. Mm. So for it, for for the sake of university, it's important that university actually gets the committees that understand, that are not biased, that are friendly, that create a safe space for these girls to go and want. But who to go and report without necessarily feeling like they are. They 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 will suffer consequence later, but also. The reason that this sex uh, sex always happens should be tackled. Issues of sex for maths. Is it, it could it be that the lecturers have so much power to determine who goes through and who doesn't? What happens if the lecturers undermarked my paper and I feel rightly that I answered it properly? Do, should I take it back to the same lecturer? Mm -hmm. And if he, if he asks for sex? Do I have an alternative like, to say uh, no? Another and lecturer will mark it. Mm. You understand? Mm. And also another lecturer, could he be having ties? Because they will defend their own. Mm. That is the truth. Yeah. You may say, no, we have a policy, they are external what? Lecturers, your paper shall be given to an external lecturer. But he will defend his own because he's a fellow lecturer. He will say, what if my turn comes? You understand what I'm saying? So it's also very important to address the causes. If it's marks, then it should be very important to address and find out how best can students marks be gotten, how best can we mark the scripts and get the fair result. And if someone has a complaint, why should they face the same person they are complaining against? You can't be a judge in your own case. So, for yeah, me, so those are the things that I think you Maybe should just to um, like say something. Um, the people who put up these committees, mm -hmm. yeah? Like I feel like it's a ripple effect. Mm -hmm. Like you've been saying, mm -hmm. I, if, I'm, if I'm going to report to the Senate and the Senate is, a, is the same person who, who has, has no problem, you may have no problem with, like says, uh, those are small, small issues, mm -hmm. like I can't be dealing with these things. Like what happens for a university student, mm -hmm. yeah? who is just trying to finish school and get through with it, but mm -hmm. like that whole process. Uh, the person who is picking the committee, you're saying well, they, they should be, they should check what kind of people are sitting on these committees yeah, and whatnot. But what the person who is biased. who is in charge of place putting this committee, these picking these people, yeah, mm -hmm. is already biased. Mm -hmm. Like who should there be like organizations, for example, that are independent mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. of the university structures and mm -hmm. things like that to actually be the ones that investigate mm -hmm. or look into these people and say these are the people that we should have in these committees. Certainly, yes. The, what, what I really meant to say is that the, the policy should have a criteria of ensuring that the people that are picked are people who will stand for the truth and nothing else. They won't be compromised. They don't have um, like cultural attachments, religious attachments. Someone say a woman cannot be raped. Your body, like you said, your body is to what? Is to your husband. No, but also woman. what I think is very important, because now you can see it's only Makere that has it. I think it's important to amend the, the Education mm -hmm. Act to make sure that by law, every university yeah. is required, or every institution of higher learning is required to have a sexual harassment policy and have all the mechanisms to prevent mm -hmm. and to address mm -hmm. in place. Mm -hmm. Yes.
All right, guys, we've been talking about sexual harassment, what it entails. This is a situation that is compromising in nature. But I think it's very important that we go through the steps of how you report sexual harassment, be it defilement, rape, your butt has been touched, whatever it is. So the first thing is in respect to the physical sexual harassment, the assault, the rape and defilement, it's very important that immediately you realize that you've been raped. You do not wash your nika or your clothes or take a bath. Reason being, when people are committing crimes, they leave a lot of evidence behind. Um, it may not have been physical that you're bruised. It may not be that uh, he beat you, but inside you, the person left their DNA, okay? So police can only get the DNA if you have not washed it out. So it's important that you don't wash your body. Then head out to police, okay? Police stations are almost everywhere nowadays. Head out to police. Once in police, they will of course open a case and give you a file number of that case. Once the case is open, they will give you what they call police form three. Police form three is the very first evidence that will be produced in court together with a policeman who registers your case. Ideally, you're supposed to go to a police doctor, but our police stations don't have police doctors. So what happens is you will go to any public hospital escorted by this police officer. At the hospital, you'll be given first aid, PEP for HIV AIDS, and then they'll conduct examination. The person conducting the examination is expected to fill in that form, the signs and things that he sees, was your hymen broken if you're virgin for the first time? Was there, was there residue, for example, maybe semen left along the way? If it was very, you know, physical, did he bruise you? Were you bruised on the body or even in the vagina? So all that will be listed down and all that is very crucial in prosecuting the case. So once that is done, the police officer will of course go back with the police form and put it as evidence in the file. And then for you, you continue with the doctor. The beauty about this is that the new law that is coming up requires that medical and legal services are supplied to the survivor at the same time. So continue being in the hospital, it's important to get counseling from the hospital. Hospitals do have counselors. If you're in school, schools often do have counselors. Get counseling because it's a very terrifying experience to go through and it's important that you grow out of it. Those who don't usually go for counseling end up having issues like, you know, being manphobic, engaging in sex trade, just so they can get it out of their system. If, for example, you got infected during the process, others will just go rampage, spreading the disease. So it's important that you get counseling and you face it and you have someone to stand with you. Uh, once the police is done with the investigations and, and collecting all the evidence that is necessary, they will send the file to the state attorney who will sanction it and then a court date shall be set. But also why, why it's important that you go for counseling is because you want to face your trauma but also you want to be able to face your accuser. Evidence, conviction, depends on the evidence that you will give. And it's very important that you're able to face the accuser and be able to send him away. Otherwise, if you don't get proper counseling and guidance, then you'll become timid. You may not even be able to give this uh, testimony and evidence. And at the end of the day, you would have left the perpetrator going around hurting other people. Yeah, so that is basically it. But it's very important that you get counseling, and I repeat, counseling is very, very important.